Today we're going to work on a flow class that prioritizes spinal rotations, twisting, spirals, whatever you want to call them. Um, and that is a more complicated body movement when you compare it to uh, flexion and extension and lateral flexion. So we're always going to start with those simpler movements before we introduce the complexity of the twists. So let's begin on our back and we'll start with some breathing. If you don't want to lay flat here, you could do something different. If you got my newsletter and you've been listening to me teach, you're familiar with the concept of 3D breathing or 360 degree breathing, where we aim to create an equal expansion or pressure system in the core with the inhale breath. So that just means we're not trying to localize the breath into any certain area. We're trying to give the trunk and the core and our torso an equal experience all the way around it. So that we can breathe into the back side and the sides just as much as the front. And that is not as easy as it sounds. You can think of a wide breath or even a circular breath. And just be patient with yourself as every skill takes some time to develop. As you do breathe here, notice if there's a lot of movement up in your upper chest or even into your shoulders or your neck. If you're experiencing that right now, just be aware of that pattern. Notice that it's kind of programmed in your body right now with the understanding that it can be changed, but that change might take time and patience and a little bit of effort. And start to turn the head a little bit, sensing the rotation in the neck. Our neck is the most mobile part of our spine. And one thing that I observe in students who are new to yoga or maybe people who have limited body awareness is that when they try to rotate their spine, they wind up rotating their spine just a few degrees and then their neck moves a lot. And that is very typical. So again, that's just an awareness we can have without being judgmental about it. It's a strategy <laughs> to try to achieve the twists. We do what we can. Come back to the center with your head. Lay still for a moment again. Feel your back ribs settle. Shoulders heavy. And then if your legs are straight, let's bend the knees and take our feet out a little wider. And we're gonna take uh, these single leg bridge twists is what I'm calling them. So it's not a full bridge pose, it's more like a pelvic rock, but it's sideways. So as you squeeze into the right tush, let your legs wiper to the left slightly and then lift that left pelvis off the floor. So it's just a really low level twist. And then we're getting the glutes engaged too. Rock back to the center. Squeeze the left bum, lift that left pelvis, bring it slightly to the right. And then we'll do that a few times rhythmically. Take it slow. Mainly concerned about the glutes here, giving them just a little bit of time to awaken. Mine feel a little bit lazy this morning. I don't know about you.
And then let's come back to the center. Give our legs a squeeze into the chest. Make yourself into a little cannonball shape. And then drop your feet to the ground. And let's take a few actual bridges and we're gonna to try to flow these nice and slow so that we can experience our individual vertebra moving as independent joints. Tuck your pelvis under, feel your low back lengthen into the floor, peel your sacrum off the floor. And then the low back starts to lift. Heading into the T-spine junction. Let's keep this first bridge pretty low. So pause here and just focus the work in the back of the legs, the buns, and even the inner thighs as they try to hug inward towards your midline. And then start to lay each vertebra back down on your mat. Think of laying a piece of Velcro on its partner one notch at a time. Take a breath just as a recovery. And then we're gonna articulate our bridge again, starting at the base, tucking under, keeping that posterior tuck even as you rise your hips. You can think of stretching your tailbone towards the backs of your knees, opening up the front of your hip creases, balancing the work between glutes and inner thighs and hamstrings. All supportive to the low back. And come down piece by piece once again. And then we're gonna do a little work with the upper spine in rotation. These will probably be fairly small movements here today to start. And we'll even just kind of start with the shoulders. So keep your legs bent, reach your left arm up, and then start to reach it over to the right as you peel your head and left shoulder off the ground. Like you're trying to reach for something that's in your right hand. And hold here, feel the stretch on the left side ribs. Try to keep your pelvis level if you can, and just rotate through your T-spine. And then come on back and switch sides. Lift and reach with the right. Keep the right hip down. And now we'll go side to side like that. It's still pretty chill, right? Still pretty slow. When we go slow, we can really observe those transitional spaces so that we can stay strong through the whole movement and not worry too much about the destination. That is why I call this class Strong and Slow Flow. It's my jam. Let's do one more to the right, one more to the left like this, and we're gonna add on. Take a little break, rest your head, rest your shoulders, feel your spine come back to neutral. Our shoulders, shoulder blades have a role in any kind of a thoracic spine movement. So we're gonna integrate a little bit of pulling to this next rotation. So, this might be a new movement for you. You might want to watch first. I'll try to guide you as best as I can with my words, but if you're not connecting the dots, you can watch for a little bit. We're going to do the same thing we just did, but instead of just lifting the shoulder, we're now going to try to lift up onto that bottom arm elbow and reach. It could help you to let your legs turn as well. I did it without my legs turning and it was a real struggle. So you can try it both ways and then we'll go to the left. 
pull yourself up onto that elbow with that base shoulder and reach across your body with that other arm. One arm is leading by reaching, but the bottom arm is almost trying to make a stationary rowing motion as you try to pull that elbow back to give you a little bit of a push to come off the ground. Let's just keep moving like this, reaching, rotating, trying to keep the ribs tucked down, almost like you're trying to do an actual core crunch or roll up, but it's a twisting roll up. Last two. And then we're gonna take a rest, tuck the knees in, give yourself a little rock. And then rock and roll your way up to your seat. And then we'll take tabletop from there. Let's warm up the wrists a little bit and shoulders and prep for the vinyasa. For wrists, we'll start to shift back and pull the hands off the floor for wrist hinges. You're trying to keep all those little wrinkles in your wrists as you flare the fingers and keep your palms flat. That's movement one. Movement two is to shift back forward to table and lift your palms without lifting your fingers. The fingers are gonna stay connected all the way. Your thumb is gonna lift a little bit. So that's it. Let's see if we can find several reps here. Palm raises and wrist hinges, that's what I call these. These come from my training with Yoga Detour, where we learn all sorts of activating practices and drills to support our yoga practice. May not look like yoga, but it's a partner. It's like an appetizer to a really great meal. Let's do three more. Final one. And we're gonna hold each of these movements, so let's rock back to the wrist hinge. And then we're just gonna tap and lift the palms rhythmically. Elbows stay straight on this. We're focusing the effort in the wrist joint. Forearm muscles starting to awaken. Last five. Four, three, two, shift it forward, palm raise, and lower. Notice that pinky knuckle wants to peel off. Try to keep it down, lift your palm, slowly lower it down. It likes to crash down, so try to control that descent. And we'll do three more. And then let's give the wrists a little bit of a break. You can sit back and kneel on your heels or rest in the child's pose. Reflect on your breathing. Trying to create that pressurized container on the inhale all the way into your back to the sides. Still noticing that there's a little bit in front but it's not like a belly balloon. Let's come back to tabletop position. We're gonna keep the right hand down as part of our foundation, level out your spine. Work on holding your natural curves. So if you have a little dip in your low back, you're gonna keep it there. If you have a little outward curve in your upper back, that's gonna stay. We're gonna try not to shift the spine and instead just take the left arm forward and a little bit outward on a diagonal as high as it'll go. Circle it around, internally rotate your arm and then when you take your arm behind you you're going to face your palm upwards so your arm bone is turning in the socket. That's the movement. Let's reach forward and outward, thumb up, palm in, outward and backward, rotate your arm inward. 
It's almost like you're trying to get your thumb up in both directions, but your arm is rotating the opposite way in both directions. Now we can re-bolster that right side foundation, widen across your shoulder blade there on that right side so we don't slouch. Last one, reach forward, reach back. And then set your left hand down, readjust. Notice if there's any hammocking in the back that we need to remedy. Right arm, diagonal reach, thumb up, backward reach, trying to lift the palm to the sky. It's like a half shoulder car, controlled articular rotation. If you've done that class with me, you know what I'm talking about. The straighter your arm can be, the better. And then we're using the rest of the body to hold stability. The left shoulder being the first line of defense. Let's do one more round. I got a little snap, crackle, pop in my right shoulder today. I'm not sure what that's about. Doesn't hurt. Okay, let's take a little rest again, rock back. Child's pose is also cool. Maybe you need a little sip of water or whatever else you're sipping on. Okay. We're going to do two things to help us with cat cow before we do cat cow. Now, this might seem really basic stuff, but we can make it a little more challenging and isolating for different parts of the spine. The first thing we're gonna do is block the thoracic so that it can't move in the neck. So you're gonna make a little tripod with your arms, elbows down, outer edges of the hands down, and then you're just gonna barely rest the crown of your head down between that little tripod so that your neck can't move and your upper back is in cat pose. So there's a little bit of flexion there. Just look back at your knees or toes. And now you're gonna try to move your pelvis. When you move your pelvis, your low back's also gonna move. So it's gonna feel like you're doing cat cow, but just with your tush. Tuck under, drop the tail, and then anterior till. It's like you're pouring your pelvis forward to the floor and your tailbone is gonna lift. That movement. Just a few more times. Most of the work here in the top of the body is just pressing the arms down so the head stays light. Last two, tuck, tilt, tuck, tilt. Great. Widen out your knees, rock your hips back. You're gonna hold onto the edges of your mat it feels like child's pose, but we need to make a little more space between the chest and the floor. So we're coming up into a child's almost. Now you're gonna keep your back, your low back where it is. It can't move. Your pelvis can't move because it's sitting back on your heels. Head's gonna stay on straight. And what we're gonna do here is lift the sternum forward and then pull your bottom sternum back in and try to round your upper back without nodding your head in either direction. So this is coming from that, almost like you're just your chest plate. Imagine you could send your heart forward through your arms and then scoop it back to the wall behind you. It's a rib cage movement, essentially. Shoulders will wanna be super helpful here, but can we just keep them stable and isolate in that? upper back area. Two more times. And let's put it all together in our traditional cat cow. I'm sure you've all done that before, so I'm not going to give you a lot of instructions on this one. We could get super technical with it and make it articulating like we did our bridge, but I think it might feel good just to free flow move here. A 
after you complete just maybe one or two more rounds of the cat cow let's take a downward dog tuck your toes send your hips high feel free to wiggle and fidget in that down dog and just paying attention to current time sensations in the back body calves and ankles maybe even the soles of your feet here and on the back side of the shoulder you can visualize here your shoulder blades fanning apart and also rotating upwardly so that outer edge is kind of spiraling away from your midline it's not pure elevation but there is some upward movement there so please allow for that free your shoulder blade to move and then you can kind of soften around the base of your neck so there's not a lot of effort there lift your heels and walk yourself to the front of your mat take your feet pretty wide and if you have a yoga block handy you might want that for this next bit bend into your left knee lift your spine about halfway up or just kind of a little longer and then left hand can come to the floor or a block your right arm is going to pull first like you're lifting a suitcase try to pull your elbow up and open chest open to the right and then reach your right arm two more breaths in this first twist And then drop yourself back to center nice and slow. Just dangle, sway. Right knee bending, right hand planting. Lengthen your spine up first and then find that rowing or pulling motion with the left arm. Once you can get your chest rotating, then reach your arms. In all of these spine twists today, observe how your shoulders could assist you with the movement, but try not to rely on them so much. In other words, put the work in your core first, and then the arms can kind of be the final expression or the flourish. And let's straight back towards center. Keep your feet this wide, but hold on to your upper arms and just let your head hang in that frame of your arms. Bend your right knee again. Bring your right arm closer to your right leg, but pull your left elbow and left hip away from each other as you peek underneath your left arm. A little upper body twist here. Pull your left hip back just a slight bit and then switch. Left knee bending, spinning that right arm away from your body, pulling your right hip back just a smidge. And then back to the center. Heel toe your feet in a little bit if you like a narrower stance for Tadasana. And bend your knees, drive down through your feet, stay connected to your foundation, and think of dropping your tailbone towards your heels you're going to keep your glutes assisting you as you roll up slow through articulation keep scooping keep flexing the spine stacking one vertebra after the next head will be the last thing to arise and once you get standing just take a moment to settle If you feel more stable with your legs all the way together, so you can really squeeze your inner thighs together, that's an option. It's also okay to stand with your feet a little bit broader for stability. You do wanna find the buns, the inner thighs hugging. Cross your arms out in front of you and press them down onto your chest. Take a side bend to your right. 
Think of tucking your shoulder blades down into your back pocket and keeping them stabilized. Back to the center, spine towards the left in a side bend. And then come back to center. Now spine flexion, like you're gonna fold your upper body over a big beach ball right out in front of you. So a little bit of a core crunch. Rise up to vertical. Other direction, curl your spine up and over a big beach ball behind you. Try to get it to happen above where your bra strap is. That's a hard area to tap into instead of just dropping your head back or leaning into your low back. Now come back vertical. Now we're gonna spiral. Keep your hips facing the front. Rotate a few degrees to the left without moving your arms, but try to keep pulling your right hip back as you rotate that upper body to the left. Back to the center. Pelvis stays forward, spin your upper trunk to the right. If you feel your left hip trying to turn too, just nudge it back. Back to the center, release your arms beside your body. Inhale, reach overhead. And then as you exhale, bend your knees a little, hinge through your hips, fold over your legs. Step back to a plank. Feel the soft elbow pits rotate forward. And as you start to pull with your arms energetically, your elbows are gonna start to bend. Keep your chest broad. Slowly pull your plank to the floor. Land it in one piece if possible. Untuck your toes. Reach your arms back behind you. And then raise your arms as high as they'll go. Drop your tail a little bit more so you can feel that lengthen your low back. And now lift your chest and your arms. Shoulders away from the ears. Bend your elbows, place your hands beside you. Give yourself just a little bit of assistance into that working cobra. And then come all the way down. Tuck your toes. Push the floor away and you'll come back to your down dog. Lift your heels, tiptoe, step or hop forward. Halfway lift on an inhale, fold on an exhale. Come on up as you inhale, arms can reach overhead to begin and then as you exhale, let's just go out to the sides like a T. Keep your arms right there. Try not to move your arms as you side bend to your right, it's all the spine. Inhale center, side bend left. Ooh, I got a sweet little pop. Come back to the top and you're gonna go left with your twist without moving those arms across. Your left arm wants to help, your right arm wants to pull. Keep them wide like you're holding a broomstick and you're trying to keep your arms all connected to that broomstick without making a gap right here at your collarbones. Pull your right hip back a little bit, rotate your chest left a little bit more and then pivot back to the center. Same thing other side. Maybe next time we'll do this, we'll actually use a broomstick. That can give us a lot of information about what we're using to rotate. Two more breaths in this standing twist. All core. Come out of the twist, rest your arms. Inhale, overhead reaching. Exhale, folding. Halfway lift, inhale breath, get long and strong. Fold it in, plant your palms, step back. Plank pose. Finding that rotation outward with the arm bones as well as the sense of pulling or that effort of pulling your hands to your toes as you pull yourself to the floor. Untuck your toes, press your feet down. Little cobra, higher cobra, or an up dog, but remember, this is about strengthening our spine, not relying on our arms, so where's the work happening? 
downward face. Lift your heels, walk it forward, top of your mat. Just gonna do one more half salutation. Inhale, halfway lifting. Then we're folding. Rise up. Hands to your heart, take a moment. Maybe you close your eyes, stand up tall. Okay, so from here, before we head into our standing postures, we're gonna do one more spinal dynamic spiral. So you're gonna cross your arms again, and we're gonna combine all of the movements of our spine. So we're gonna start with a little rotation and flexion to the right. So just that upper trunk, and then a side bend right, then a baby back bend, a side bend left, a little bit of rotational flexion, and then pure flexion. Let's go that way one more time. Start in vertical, rotate and flex right. It's like you're trying to pull your left shoulder over towards the right side of the room. Side bend right. Stay in a pain-free range of motion here. Curl back, just the upper back. Side bend left. Flex and rotate left forward flex. Stand up tall. We're going to do two in the other direction. You're going to be on your own here. Try to smooth it out so that it doesn't seem so um, paused. Make it more of a rotation. Two on your own, rotating the spine the other direction. Trying to hit all those little spots. Notice your shoulders want to lift and pull. Try to keep them soft and quiet. Once you've completed two, I think I'm doing three. You're just gonna find your mountain pose. Let your arms hang. Inhale, overhead reaching. Exhale, fold it in. Step your left leg back. Bring your left knee to the ground. If you feel like you need a little knee pad there, just roll up that left side of your mat for an extra layer. And then when you arrive up into this half kneeling position, let's try to get that left thigh vertical. Take your arms out to the side. Try to keep the arm position as you rotate your chest to the right side of the room. You're gonna try to keep that left armpit open. So if you started to pull your shoulder across just to get more range, instead put the work in the core. Two more breaths. And then untwist your spine. Hands can come to your blocks. You're going to straighten your front leg like half splits. Pull your toes towards your nose. left hand will stay. You're going to take your right hand underneath your rib cage so that you can feel the left side of your ribs with your right hand. Lift your heart slightly, then pull your bottom ribs in and rotate your upper body to the right as far as you can go, and then release that right arm to reach it upward. Unravel your spine, rebend your front leg, tuck your back toes under, lift your left knee, and then step your left foot forward and a little out to the side to the left. You're setting up a pyramid stance. Come up so that your spine is in a halfway lift, about level two, your hips, or maybe even a little higher, and just take your hands to your hips. Connect to that feeling of a neutral back one that's not overly flexed or extended, just kind of like your baseline. Breathing for five, four, three, two. Rebend that front leg, step forward. Utkatasana, fierce pose. Little baby squat here. Let's arrange the arms right ahead of the shoulders. 
Now we are gonna use the right arm to help us turn open. So it's gonna be that rowing motion again. Pull back like you're pulling a bowstring until your elbow is as far back as it can go. Keep reaching your left arm forward. Now expand your arms wide and come back to pelvis. If the left hip is trying to rotate along with you, try to nudge it back slightly and get that upper body to spin for five, four, three, two. Stand up, rest your arms. Inhale, reaching overhead. Exhale, fold. Step your right foot back, bring your right knee down. Maybe you pat it extra. Half kneeling position, it's different than a lunge because we're not in deep hip extension here. We're trying to stack knee and hip, arms to the T. Feel your glutes engage on that back leg, helping to keep your pelvis like this as you turn. The barrel of your thorax open to the left in a twist. Try not to pull with that right arm across your body. Keep it expansive. Use your exhales to make a little more progress. And then unrotate your spine. Half splits position with or without your yoga blocks. Left toes curl up. And then let's settle the right hand to a yoga block so we can come out of this depth a little bit. Tuck your bottom ribs in. Use your left arm to pull that suitcase off the floor and let that assist you in rotating open to the left with your heart. Untwist. Tuck your back toes under, lift your right knee off the ground, step back to the plank. Inhale here. Exhale, pull your plank to the floor in one piece. Remember the earlier cues with the arms and shoulders. Untuck your toes, roll your heart upward, contract the back. Down dog, hips go high. Right leg will reach, lift your left heel, shift forward. Tuck your knee to your chest, step forward. Warrior one, shorten your stride, bump that left foot out to the left, set your heel all the way down, arms to the T. Pelvis forward. Rotate your chest to the right. Keep pulling your right hip crease back. I forgot the pyramid on that left side. We'll get back to it. From your warrior one, Let's just take a regular arm position, whatever that means for you, if that's overhead or hands to the heart. Just take a couple breaths here, working on neutralizing. And then bring your hands to the floor. Step it back for down dog. If you like the flow, it's there for you. Left leg, bring it through. You're coming into your warrior one pose. Arms to the T to begin. Neutralize. Now rotate upper trunk. Strong core commitment here. Oops. I lost you for a second there, Ellen. You popped back in though, that's good. All right, come forward and neutralize. Bring your hands to your hips and straighten your front leg. So this should be pretty close to your pyramid stance, but if it doesn't feel right, you can maybe take your legs wider side to side or shorter front to back. Come halfway down or not quite halfway down. Hands are gonna stay on the pelvis. You can feel it tipping forward. Widen across your collarbones. There might be a slight squeeze of your shoulder blades into each other on your back side. Rebend your front leg, step forward to the chair. Arms forward, right ahead of the shoulders. 
Open your chest left, left arm goes back. Right hip goes back. And then unravel and go the other way. Stand all the way up, reach your arms overhead, inhale. Exhale, cactus your arms, lift your chest. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. A half lift on your inhale. Exhale, fold. We're coming back to the left knee to the ground. So step your left foot back, start in that shortened stance. Rise. Arms as high as the shoulders. Tuck the pelvis. Rotate your spine to the right. This is a great place to be. If you want it a little bit more, you're gonna still focus on tucking the left bum under as you take a small upper body extension with that twist. Maximizing the effort in your upper back first so that the load doesn't automatically go to the low back, which is what tends to happen. Rise up out of that. Left hand down. Right toes staying where they are, left toes tucking, left knee lifting. It's just this runner's twist. Now bring your hands to the inside of your right foot. We're gonna pivot open left. Take a side lunge left, but keep your right hand grounded and open your chest towards the left side. This is gonna be a two movement flow. The transitions will look different for each of you. You're gonna stay pretty low. Come back to that twisting runner's right leg. And then twisting side lunge left leg. The feet need to pivot. You can support yourself with your arms as much as you need it. That's two, we're gonna try for four. Come back to runner's twist right. Side lunge twist left. Right hand stays down. Last one, runner's twist right. Side lunge, twist left. And then come back forward. Bring your left knee back to the ground, but keep your toe tucked so that you can use it to push the floor away here in a moment. We're gonna take hands to the heart. This is a more traditional version of a twist that you've probably done before. As you hinge forward, Spin to the right and then connect your elbow to your knee. Now you might be tempted here to really kind of leverage yourself into a deeper twist. Let's just try to stay expansive through the collarbone so we're not shrugging that left shoulder up. Keep trying to draw it down. Lift your back knee if you want a little more. Breathing for five, four, three, can you keep the twist this deep? Take your arms back out to that T-shape. Breathing for five, four, three, two. Set your hands down, sweep your right leg up and back. Downward dog splitting. Bend your right knee if you want and let your hips open to the side. Reach your right toes left. And then if you like that vinyasa flow, you can take a round here. Otherwise, just settle in for a quick rest. Downward dog. Walk your feet forward, top of your mat, folding. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, folds. Rise up, reach up, strong back body. Exhale your hands to your heart. Reset. Inhale, reach. And then we're folding again. Step your right foot backwards. Bring your right knee down. 
arms to the T. Find the right buns to tuck under so that you feel a nice stretch on the front of your right hip. Rotate left. All spine, very little shoulders here. They're just there along for the ride. If this is feeling great, you can stay. Otherwise, you're gonna keep that bum tucked and lean back a little bit. Where's your three deep breath? Can you still breathe into your back? Can you still breathe into the sides of your ribs? Unravel, vertical spine, hands to the floor. Tuck your back toes, lift your right knee, runners, and then open up again left with your chest. And then the flow is going to be this movement, pivoting over to the right, bend your right knee, open your chest right, left hand stays down, runners twist left. Side lunge, twist right. You got it, keep rolling. A total of at least four. And then when you come back to that left lunge, you're gonna bring your back knee back down. Still pretty short stride. Rise your spine, hands to the heart, tuck under the bum. As you rotate your spine left, you're also gonna hinge forward so that you can make that connection. Elbow to the knee without cranking or over efforting the twist. Still tug your shoulder, that right shoulder down away from your ear so you don't get congested in that collarbone area. Tuck your back toes. Lift your back knee. If that's too much, stay where you are. Breathing for five, four, three, two. You're staying if you can. You're gonna widen out your arms to the T for five. Back leg super strong as well. Four, three, two, slowly hands to the floor, try to control that. Left leg up, big stretch. Open your hip on that left side. Optional vinyasa. Quick rest before we head into our peak pose. And you're probably gonna want a yoga block for this. And so you'll have your yoga block towards the front and left of your mat. And you can always adjust it, but that's a good place to start, the front and left. Down dog. Right leg can lift, big stretch there if you want it. Step forward. And then look back at your back foot. Step it forward and a little to the left so you can get your heel all the way down, your right leg will straighten mostly. And then you're coming back up to that at least halfway position, maybe even a little higher. Let's bring just a little cobra into the chest without dumping into the low back. Maybe here you test and see if your pelvis can still move. If you can still tuck your pelvis under and tilt it forward, that's a really good sign. If it feels jammed and it can't move very well, you can shorten your stance from front to back. And I think I'm gonna do that anyway, even though it was moving. Right thumb, take it to your right hip crease. Just use that right thumb to energetically draw your right thigh and outer hip back slightly. Take your arms out like wings to the side. 
it's fine to keep a tiny bend in that front leg. Now zip up your low ribs. Think of a little bit of upper body flexion as you twist to the right a few degrees. By flexion, I mean kind of like you're curling your upper back to cat, but it's very subtle. Untwist. Do it again. Let's not move the arms. Just turn your upper body a few degrees to the right. Come back to the center. Can you try for two more of those? I know it's challenging. It doesn't matter how far you twist. We're looking for compensations, like the arms moving a lot. Last time, twist, 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 as far as you can go with your core. Then your left hand can find that yoga block on the high side, revolve triangle. Yes, the right arm is reaching, but the effort here is the spiral of your spine column. Stay connected at both heels. Try to lift both arches, breathe for three. Two. Untwist nice and slow. Fold over your leg any amount for a regular pyramid pose. Those yoga blocks might still be really useful to you. Okay, let's step forward. And then you're going to take your right toes way back. Runners. You can kind of lift and lower that back knee a few times. You could bend and straighten into your front leg a few times. Step back to your plank, breathe in one time. Exhale, pull it halfway or all the way down. Some sort of a spine strengthening position. Down dog or a quick rest. Okay, let's head back to downward dog. <clears throat> Step your left foot through, however you like to do that. And then take a peek back at your right foot. Move it forward and a little to the right. So you're in a shortened stance. Straighten your left leg. Make sure that yoga block now is into the front right of your mat. Bring your spine up like the halfway lift or a little higher than halfway. Maybe just the slightest hint of a diagonal line. Left thumb to your left hip. Try to press your left outer hip back just so that you can feel that neutral pelvis facing the uh, short side of your mat. If you're feeling back bendy here, knit your low ribs together. Keep that down as part of your core. Breathe into 360 breath all the way around that cylinder equally. Arms to the T. We're trying for four trunk rotations. The first one just a few degrees. Just tease it. Open back. Rotate left. Keep your arms out in that broomstick shape. Unrotate. Two more times. Last time we're holding just for a moment. Then right hand yoga block, rotating, trying to stack wrists and shoulders. Eventually it may not happen today. Nudge your left hip back again, that outer left hip. And then try to connect to your back leg heel as much as possible. Find your breath. Beautiful job. Fold back down, pyramid pose. Step your right foot up to meet your left foot. And then bring your left toes back to a lunge. Right leg's gonna stay ahead. And then you're gonna rock into some movement with the back or the front leg. And then you can take it through a vinyasa. 
plank, pull, hover. Contract the back, strengthen your spine in that up dog or cobra. Finally, a child's pose. Experiment with how you want your legs and arms arranged in this. There's many ways. Let's make our way to our seat. Come on down to the back. And we're just gonna neutralize for a moment. You could keep your knees bent and your feet flat or you can make that cannonball shape again, hugging thighs into your trunk. Allowing for the spine just to let go here. Receiving breath. Let's do one quick thing for the hips. Bring your knees right up over your pelvis. So your shins feel like the top of a table. And for internal hip rotation, we'll try to face the tops of our thighs towards each other. That will cause your heels to spin away from each other. And breathing. And let's go the other way. Set your feet back down nice and close to each other in the middle of your mat. Let your thighs butterfly apart. You could set your yoga blocks underneath your legs for a little bit of support here. Now, if there's anything that you feel like your body needs before we do take our rest, now's the time to explore that. Basically, anything goes. Different practices demand different things, and your body probably knows the way, what it needs right now. Let's set up for a rest. If you would rather sit and meditate this morning, you could come on up, make your seat, find some stillness regardless of which position that you decide is right for you. Set your gaze or close your eyes all the way down. Let your jaws be soft. Smooth out your breath, gentle waves. Let go of effort. Welcome in the ease. Thank you. 
invite you to stay just like you are physically so that your mind can be the witness to the state that you've made with your conscious attention, commitment to rest, still there. Being the observer of your breathing, that natural, maybe even subtle flow right now as your position doesn't demand much effort. Breath might be a little bit more shallow, a little softer, a resting style of breath. And if you feel like it's the right thing to do for you now, you can use changes in the breath to initiate changes in your body. Fuller, more embodied, more intentional cycles of breath. Using your inhales to create some stretch on the sides of your ribs. Using your breath to touch along your backside. And then extending your breath beyond your torso as if it could travel down to your fingers and your toes to create a connection there. Continue to explore with your mind, with your breath, with your movements as a way to come back to a more awakened state. Resolve to stay the student of your body today as you move off of your mat and out into your day. Keep dropping back in. Staying connected to your center. Keeping yourself aware and grounded even when life tries to disrupt you. You can take some time to roll onto your side if you like, or just rock and roll your way up to a seated pose. like you need a little movement here in the neck or the shoulders it might be nice and then we'll sign off with a real quick moment of gratitude giving thanks for this practice of unity discovery inquiry and also being thankful for this opportunity through technology to connect Thanks so much for being here this morning. Have a great weekend. Namaste.